Somebody linked this for Bobert. What is this? What am I looking at? What am I prospectively looking at? Because I haven't looked at it yet. I'm about to look at it. Let's find out what I'm looking at. Oh. You all are allowing delinquent employees to sit on their sofas at home instead of actually getting to work and doing their jobs. Uh, this is absolutely unacceptable. I really do love how a huge portion of the Republican platform is just people should suffer more. There should be more misery. So our employees are working whether they are in the office or at home and they are Are you monitoring the work that they are doing from home on a regular basis? It's yes. such Karen shit too. I, it's incredible to me that anyone likes Bobert because I know that she's a fascist and fascists like fascists and whatever, but she's kind of innately unlikable. You would think if anything, the misogyny of the average Republican voter would preclude them from voting for somebody who comes across this like, you know, Karen-ish and dim-witted we are every every employee do you have do you have the numbers of the hours that are submitted are, are you counting how many times they're logging into their computers yeah. and responding to casework so our employees are subject to the same performance management processes and oversight they are whether they're teleworking or working in an office and we have systems in place that our managers use to schedule assign and track workloads that's yeah that's literally that's yeah that's usually how it works right like i've never worked from home at an office job except for whatever the f this is but I imagine that if you're doing that work, you have like an office portal that you log into and whether or not you're working at home or in the office, like if you do work, the work is done. Like you see the work done. Like if there was a thing you had to do, the, the manager can be like, hey, that thing isn't done, whether you're in the office or not. Like there are some things it's good to have people in the office for, I guess, but there's also reasons why it's probably preferable to have people at home. Um, a lot of, a lot of working in the office, office work is just tedium it's just sitting there having done all your work or not having anything to do or there are things you're waiting on that other people need to do before you can do your part and you're just sitting there for like hours doing nothing you know at least when you're at home you can do other stuff like live like exist and be happy with life and that includes individual employee workloads in many cases so real-time understanding of what actions are being processed at any particular given time additionally our employees are required to be accessible to their supervisors clients colleagues and external parties during work hours via a variety of means including instant messaging video platforms and telephone they god damn in in some cases actually in my from what i've heard um i was about to say in my experience in my experience hearing other people uh working at home sometimes can actually like get more work out of an employee for, in like an exploitative sense because um when you're at when you work in the office you have your hours like nine to five or whatever whereas when you work at home you'll get a message at like 5.30 being like, oh yeah, can you do this? And it's like, well, you're still in the office, the office being your home, which is dumb, of course. Like the rule should be like, if it's nine to five, if you're paid for nine to five, like nine to five is when you're working. Uh, it doesn't matter whether or not you're, you know, um, at the office that is your home. They are connected to the workplace, whether they are in the office or at the home. Th then why is the backlogs for social security applicants increased from 41,000 to 10700,000. Because we've been historically underfunded for a number of years now. I don't think you're underfunded. You're you're funded at the Nancy Pelosi levels, at the Democrat levels. We just continued at the Nancy Pel what what? That same funding. So I would say at we, pandemic level spending. So I'd say we have an increase of over 8 million beneficiaries over the last 10 years at the same time we experienced our lowest work staffing levels at the end of FY22. That's a math problem. I mean, that is a problem. If you have those workloads you know, increasing and you don't have the staff to take care of those workloads, you're going to have the backlogs that you're talking about, Representative. Keep in mind, this is, this is exactly what Republicans want, too. They want the government to slow down and buckle and break, and then they want to blame it on, like, workers having too many rights. This is, like, totally on brand for them, literally. Like, um, un underfund the Social Security office, like, keep them from getting their work done properly, make sure that people can't get, like, their, their application submitted or whatever. And then when you bring them in to testify to Congress, you're like, um, I think this is be about uh, lazy workers not working hard enough, you know? Like, it, like, it's so on brand. Anyway, that didn't work out. Oh, oh, speaking, speaking of not working out for Republicans in terms of, um, in terms of congressional, uh, 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 uh um, testimony, <laughs> um, I, I didn't know how to like make an entire segment of this. You know how there's been a desperate effort on the part of the GOP 
to make Hunter Biden the big thorn in Joe Biden's, uh, you know, side or whatever, um, Hunter Biden offered to publicly testify to everything related to him and his alleged, like, uh, you know, legal improprieties, and Republicans said no. And it's been humiliating for them. Like, like all of this buildup, like, let's get Hunter Biden, we'll have him confess all of his crimes. Why no public? Because they don't have anything. Because A, as it is known, Hunter Biden is a decently charismatic person. He's not like some blustering fool who, who, who would just like stumble into embarrassing admission after embarrassing admission. You know, he can, he can hold himself together well enough to like deliver a competent testimony. Uh, and B, they don't have anything on him. They like essentially it's it's essentially calling their bluff, right? Years and years and years of the Biden crime family is going down, you know, this evidence, that evidence. But in reality, nothing is stuck, literally nothing. And as a consequence of that, a testimony from Hunter Biden would just make them look really weak and inept. You would have this massive public trial, the son of a sitting president testifying to Congress. That's huge. And what would they get from it? Nothing. All it would do is shine a gigantic spotlight on their inability to make anything stick. Incredibly embarrassing. You know, incredibly embarrassing. I, I love um, congressional inquiries because they almost never work out for the GOP. Um, the GOP is just too stupid and incompetent to make, you know, to, to, to make the moves they need to. Uh, you can't see it, but Artemis right there and he's licking his foot. He's doing a great job. So I want everyone here to root for him. Okay. Um, though, yeah, we are missing the opportunity for Marjorie Taylor Greene to sort of accusatorily hold up a sheet of paper at Hunter Biden at the, at the testimony and, and go, is this your cock, Mr. Biden? And like point at his big meaty cock with all the veins and stuff. And for Hunter Biden to sort of solemnly lean forward into the microphone and go, yes, yes, it is uh, Congresswoman. Yeah. Pull down your pants. Let's see. <laughs> According to a Tuesday letter addressed to committee chair, James Comer, Coomer. Biden agreed to testify before the committee on December 13th, as long as the hearing was public. See, again, Republicans want the hearing to be private because it's possible that in a testimony they get like some little nugget of info. The biggest thing they would get would be the ability to lie about what was said effectively, either through lying outwardly or, or, or outright or, or misrepresenting it or sort of selectively uh, offering up information. They could make it seem as though things went really badly for the, the Biden family. Um, but in public, they sort of lose that ability. In the letter, Biden's attorneys quote Comer's own demand issued in November that given Biden's willingness to address this investigation publicly up to this point, we would expect him to be willing to testify before Congress. The letter added that open door proceedings quote would prevent selective leaks, manipulated transcripts, doctored exhibits, or one-sided press statements. Republicans would not have it. Quote, Hunter Biden is trying to play by his own rules instead of following the rules required of everyone else. What? What? Comer wrote in a statement. That won't stand with House Republicans. A public testimony from somebody they've been making a political battle of for years is him trying to play by his own rules? Like, again, just shameless dishonesty. Their only intention here was to lie about and misrepresent the events of a private testimony. That's it. That's it. Good meme. Artemy. You're so fat. 